Actually, the only AD carry that actually challenges you on that kind of shit is Sneaky. I, I think, let's say we're all robots who just play the game and we just need info, we just need data. And, you know, I come in with all the data. That's good, but people are real people, they're stubborn, they're, they're, they, they're stuck in their habits, they have mental blocks, yes. they have emotions. It's just, coaching is honestly more like playing fucking player therapists than actually coaching a lot of the time. Because people just have like mental problems i don't want to not like no, actually no, no. Like some, some of them have but... no some some of them do some of them do have yeah. mental illnesses and you have to know how oh, i didn't say that but go ahead well yeah but no i mean it, it's true uh you know so it, sometimes you have to know how to damage it or not damage it, manage it jesus damage um sometimes you have to know how to manage it and also you need to know the warning signs like when someone is clearly like starting to either get anxious or depressed or if they're starting to become very reserved and whatnot. Um, Dude, I mean, so yeah. how, how, when's the last time you even wa uh, you watched like, LCS team scrim? Like, I'll tell you that at least two games out of the five games that we scrim, so 40% of the practice, at least one player is on very serious tilt. Like, really serious, where it's just obvious that they've given up. Um, and that's an average. That's an average. Okay. Like, one, one player... 40% of the practice that we have is either mic muted and refusing to communicate that day or just, you know, it's just random occurrences, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It, so, I don't know, man. LCS is, what the fuck? It's, it's pretty fucked. What's it like in LCK, dude? Uh, try hard every day? So, um, yeah, and if, they're, if not everyone's try harding, then... Uh, it's, it's about time, right? It well yeah it is sub out time but it's all there's also it's other stuff out. that no I mean I think Korean culture we're all just a lot closer like even uh, so on BBQ we had two imports uh, we had Malice and we had uh, Deuce um, and Malice has lived in Korea for three years but all the Koreans were really really welcoming towards the foreign teammates and whatnot and Malice would actually try really hard. Um, there were some scrims where some players would be very reserved, but it wouldn't take that much to fix it. But I, I don't know. It, it sounds like the level that you're talking about is an entirely different planet, like, um, of tilt. Yeah, it's, it's rough, man. It's rough. So I, I've always had the mentality of like, you know, when I argue with my teammates, at the end of the day, we still respect each other. We're still friends. Yeah. Right? yeah, like yeah, yeah. We, we argue for a purpose. The purpose is to get on the same page or to 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 change someone's mind. Ultimately, for like the goal of being better or winning or whatever. But like, I think I, I don't, I'm not even speaking from personal experience. I think people are like, oh, it's fucking Team Liquid. You guys are always tilted. But like, no, like actually, there's literally like multiple. Sometimes you'll just have a couple days of scrims where you're just winning too fast in scrims. You're stomping too hard. And the enemy team just cancels. So you just get less practice because you're playing well. And they, the enemy team just doesn't want to finish out the block because it's too mentally damaging to get stomped. And I'll tell you guys honestly that like I'm pretty sure that we did that against Cloud9. I'm not 100% sure actually. I, I, did you move camera? Did I move camera? No, I didn't move camera. I'm literally in the middle. But like, I gotta say, like this shit happens a lot, right? Like, Playing player therapist is, is a real job. It's yes, full, it is. It's a real full-time job. Yes. yes, it is. Fuck. I take. It, I actually take it back. I don't think that we did it against C9, but I think we ha we've heard that like other teams would cancel on C9 because they're just smacking them too hard in scrims. And I think Vulcan actually did an interview a couple days ago where he talked about it. No one wants to scrim C9 because it's too demoralizing. So they're getting punished for being too good. In Korea, everyone would want to scrim C9, right? Like, it's like, please, yes. like, give me an extra game. Like, let me get yeah. shit on. I think there's, like, some really fucked up American mindset where, like, losing is the enemy. Like, do anything you can you can do to avoid losing. But, like, sometimes you actually just need to get shit on to improve. And, like, it's just, it's pretty bad, honestly. Like, I just think mentality-wise, I don't know. Maybe Americans are just too snowflake compared to uh, I mean, I, compared to other teams, other regions. I, I think that uh, like 20 years of esports would suggest that too. Like StarCraft One, StarCraft Two mindsets, WarCraft Three. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know of any esport title where that type of cultural stuff isn't present. 
Yeah, I see, I see. So you saw it in StarCraft the same way, where it's just like Americans are afraid oh, to get yeah. shit on. Americans, like, they don't want to be humiliated Very... in practice. Yes, yes, but, like, yes, so yes, you yes. need to You need to get humiliated in practice so you can improve, but it's just, it doesn't feel that way sometimes, but, you know, it's okay. We're, we're Americans over here. We eat hamburgers every day, am I right? That's pretty NA. Just have a, have a really one-dimensional, like, a closed-minded mentality. Yes, uh, so, I mean, there's there's lots of issues, like, uh, for instance, at, at, at Worlds last year, I can't, I, like, I mean, various things come into my head, but, like, if, if your team composition's outscaling the opponents, why are you grouping for a 20-minute Ocean Dragon? Or, like, something something stupid, like, you're, you're not going to win the game or lose the game over that kind of a capture. Um, these are, like, demonstrable concepts that you should be able to just pull everyone and get them to agree, so I, I don't know. But then there's laning phase stuff that happens, like why is it only now this year that people start cheater recalling? Do you call it cheater recall? I don't, I don't know if NA calls it that. Uh, that's a pretty edgy way to say it, I mean, we just, I usually say free base. Uh, th like on third the, or fourth wave? Yeah, well, you usually yeah, want to yeah, do yeah. it right, as, right after you push your cannon, because yes. it takes forever for the, can the turret, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Just a free base, yeah. like, uh, for bot lane it's a little different than solos because your support can soak the XP and eventually it'll, it'll like, kind of rubber band back to you anyways. Like, so you actually yeah. miss literally zero XP instead of just, like, one yes. creep, but, but yeah, that's... And then you can pull Honestly, like, I win a lot of, I win a lot of m matches in LCS by just having better base timings in my enemy to carry and having a plan, like, I mean, sure, yeah. you know, like, just basic shit, like, oh, I, I, I want to base it, like, 875 gold and he wants to base... At Sheen or something, you know. So like, yeah, if, if I force the base, yeah, it's like so basic, right? But like, any AD carries actually just don't have a brain, so they don't think about it. Actually, the only AD carry that actually challenges you on that kind of shit is Sneaky, which so I thought he was like kind of good. But uh, rest in peace. You have to do stuff like that against Victor, or I mean, the the same thing applies to Lost Chapter mages and mid. Yeah, uh, you attack their Lost Chapter by yeah. Laning phase is also extra important, like. If you can get ahead in CS and then you know when to beat recall, because like if you're both going for the same item and you're ahead 10 CS, it's actually like game losing to just get your BF and then he doesn't have his and then you just you keep staying ahead. Yes. But uh, yeah, cheater recall is pretty edgy. I like it though. I like it. I've just never heard cheater, anyone I, say that in my life. Uh, LAC uses it. LCK uses it. I I don't know. When when I was coaching the Korean team BBQ, uh, the Koreans couldn't like explain in depth what was going on, but they would describe it as like someone cheating. So then I just started using it, and then now it's uh, I don't know Europeans use because wow, uh, Pog right? Pog. Pog. Usually yeah. in NA we just say like Twitch chat memes and shit. A Pog recall. Maybe that's like gonna be the next iteration. Fuck. The thing that you were saying on stream the other day, um, it, it's a thing I, I've talked about a lot, like recently, uh, on like streams or whatever, um, is you mentioned like y your team having bad communication. Um, and I, I hate the word communication because I feel like communication is only necessary when there's player gaps. Um, and what I mean by player gaps is like, let's say you see something, but your jungler doesn't. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's not a communication issue. That's you're clearly aware of something and your jungler doesn't fucking recognize it. So there's a need to speak. But if the jungler recognizes it or the mid laner recognizes it, it's because you're sharing sort of game knowledge. But if there's if there's different tiers and all different areas, then you need to speak. But that's a byproduct of bad practice or it's a byproduct of bad assessment leading up to the practice. Because how is this so consistent? Right? Because you've been a pro player for so many years now. And obviously, um, you guys had one change, right? In the offseason. Mm -hmm. um, jungle. How the fuck does everything apparently fall apart? It's not. If, if players are constantly having to communicate with each other to hold their hands as they walk through a fucking maze, they're not practicing good. It, it, does, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. It doesn't register in my brain that everyone needs to be escorted. And when boot campers come over to Korea and I try to help boot campers, or we do like internal scrims uh, with like various boot campers that come here, um, or like the, the 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 mock fucking scrim team that I almost brought to TCS when we when we boot or scrimmed against some of the boot camping teams in Korea. It was always so weird to me how much communication 
Western players needed to give each other. And there's uh, a lot of fucking filler info that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I mean, I, I agree and I disagree. I think I think I agree with the point that you you need comms because um not not everyone is seeing the same thing, and that is usually a byproduct of of different experiences. But I think it, you'll never have five people who are absolute experts in every category in the same level like everyone's an expert in their own role to an extent like you have people who you know who play mid who know a lot about jungle or you have somebody like a support who knows a lot about i don't know mid or top or something or, like situations and stuff like that but like you need comps to fill the information gap for sure and i guess in an ideal situation you don't need to communicate once you get enough on the same page once you all think the same way but then there's really no point to even be on a team if they're not if you're not going to have a steady flow of information i guess in the game because like you can't com you can't control how you're perceiving the game that day your your game sense you can't control how good your laning phase is going but the, the one thing you can always control no matter what is the way your communication goes okay i so maybe maybe i'm i'm talking in a, a weird way uh, because it, i i agree with you that communication about like um thing your your game sense that's important to convey um or communication about maybe feelings based on uh patterns that the opponents are displaying in lane right mm -hmm. but do you agree or disagree that a jungle a jungler should be able to f key to your lane understand the lane state and then know how to path i do agree with that point I 100% yeah. agree. That would be ideal. That's not reality, though. The reality is a jungle. Like most junglers that I've played with, cannot F key to a lane and tell you whether or not it's gankable. The lane needs to dictate when it's gankable, and and how it's gankable. It's warded here. It's uh, you know, like you, you should come like this pathing. Like that's just my experience as a player. But I agree, like, I would have loved it if I never had to tell Xmithy or Broxa when to gank. They can just know. And then there's no need for communication, but I think that's, like, it's too far so from reality. I, well, I, well, I disagree that it's far from reality. Uh, because of experience, like, my own subjective experiences. And I can understand if your experiences across different teams, that's not the reality. Mm -hmm. But someone should be making the jungler get to that point. I see. Because... They lost. The, they said the it, it, it doesn't. It. I mean, F keys. Uh, I remember I made the first video about F keys in 2015. And everyone made fun of me, saying that it's it's fucking it's pointless, right? But nowadays, uh, it's pretty mainstream. Like everyone uses F keys. Um, not everyone has to use it as, as much as like Faker or something. Um, but uh, like, um, you could be you could be playing jungle, look bot lane, and probably understand the bot lane state. Exactly, I could. Okay. Because I'm an expert on bot lane. I mean, no, okay. I'm like, I'm gonna know more about bot lane than most jungler, pro junglers. Right. But a, a lane state, um, a lane state only requires you to entertain minion position relative to turret and then understand what the champions do. Sort of, right? Because mid, mid laners do this all the time, top laners do it um, to a lesser extent because the metas change up so much. So, what is so far fetched? for a jungler to learn these things because i don't think it's far-fetched but then also in, in in my own subjective experiences um so like i i had malice on bbq um or whatever malice knew more about the lanes than the laners um so malice would not only go into like scrims and 1v1s but also spend a lot of time talking about the laners like lane manipulation and other stuff but it's also because he plays lane uh or you know um I think, I think it's the thing in Korean solo queue where everyone plays multiple lanes and roles. And so the generic baseline understanding is elevated. But if like on Team Liquid, you're saying that you wish that you didn't have to tell Xmithy or Broxa about lane states, there's a problem that's already happening outside of the game. Because if they can't do it on their own, that's where practice should be dedicated. Why can't you recognize a lane state? Why can't you assess something baseline? Because I... I I personally don't think it's that hard um, with dedicated practice. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're. I think we are on the same page in a sense because, well, I think one one thing that you're that we're both overlooking is like what, what is the coach's role in all this? And and you're saying it's the the coach's role is to like make that jungler, make that player understand the situation better for next time. Sometimes the coach just doesn't know. 
Yeah, right? Like, this, yeah, like the that's coach, the problem. The coach, in, in a lot of cases, does, just doesn't know the answer um, or doesn't have the right answer. And so communicating in-game a lot of the time is about building your teammates' habits. It's like, yo, like, this situation's happening again. You know, I got the freeze again bought. It's going to be incomplete in a minute. And you say that over and over, like, not over and over again, but you say it, like, multiple times throughout the week. And then you hope that by, like, training your team... We're using, like, botlane and jungle only, but, like, really this is just about any situation yes. ever, but, like, you're trying to train yes. your teammates to see the situation the same way you do so that eventually you don't have to communicate. That's the ultimate goal, I agree. Yes. 